guys, it's Dan from World of Mr. Grey, and I'm coming to you with a big mega compilation of all my favourite debunks of the year, part one. Uh, this is going to be a long video. It's Christmas time, and I started making these paranormal videos on the 29th of December of 2019. So I've put together a load of clips, some of my favourite ones which I've done. This is part two because there's so many, there's going to be a part two. This is part one, sorry. Because there's going to be a part two at some point. Most of you have probably seen these. I know a lot of you haven't because I I, I, all, I constantly get asked, can you do these, can you do this, can you do that? And I most of the time reply back, I've already done them. So I thought I'd give you a little mega comp. This is a long one. So anyway, I hope you enjoy. Merry Christmas. And I'm working on some uh, short videos which will be out over the next few days. Anyway, thanks for watching. This one um, is not so much a ghost, it's a ball lightning which I've been seeing over social media the last few days. It was uploaded through TikTok, that should give you give it away for a start. But if you look at it, you'll see it going across, you'll see the reflections on the tracks and the ground below. None on the uh, lampposts and the trees and anything else. Um, Anyone who knows anything sensible will clearly see as fake. There's a lot of people believing this real. There are many giveaways in that video which you could see which is fake. Or you could just Google for 30 seconds, find the original uploader, and see that he's put CGI in the title. <laughs> With people in his comments still saying, it's fake, it's not real. No shit, Sherlock. Right, this next one, I've seen this so many times on uh, ghost video channels, ghost channels, paranormal channels, whatever. And it's a bunch of boys in the Middle East exploring an abandoned building. Now, the earliest I can find footage of this is 2009. I don't know if it was filmed before that or if that is as far as it goes, I don't know. But they're filming on old mobile phone cameras. And they get to a room and... <laughs> When they get to the room, they see, they, well, they don't react to it, but uh, you can see a figure walking towards the camera with his hands in his pockets and he has no head. Spooky. Very spooky. It's a simple overexposure of the camera. The old mobile phones from years ago, especially 2009, anyway, maybe earlier actually, coming where the first one. Those old mobile phones, especially mobile phones, they struggle with overexposure and basically the way it works is when there's a really bright light in front of the camera, but you're in a, a dimly lit area. The camera struggles between the, the exposure between the outdoors or the bright light and the dimmer lights. So that's what that's doing. And you can even see in other parts of the video where, where they're walking outside and you can see the same effect. You've got two of their mates in front. One of them, his head is flicking in and out. <laughs> so either he's like that really fast, which I doubt it, or it's the overexposure of the camera making his head disappear because <laughs> the focal uh, focus of the camera is obviously head height and it's it's struggling that's what it's doing the camera is struggling to find the correct exposure for the camera it's just the trickery of the camera which they they didn't fake it you know they didn't know that would, that their footage was going to turn out like this and like I said, the reason they didn't react to the headless boy walking towards them is because it was their mate, Jeff. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's all it is, is just overexposing of the camera. And like I said, you can go through the entire video yourself. And in certain areas, you'll see the same effect on their mates who are walking in front of them. So it's not a ghost, it's overexposing of the camera. And that's, that's it. <laughs> First one is the restaurant ghost. I've seen this a few times, and it's a girl having a food in a restaurant. This is Jimmy's, Jimmy's, what's it called? Jimmy's World Grill and Bar in Luton. It's since closed down. But there's a girl there having food on her own, and she gets up, walks away, and then the plates start falling off, flying off the table. The cloth flies off the table. A few spectators look behind to see, what's that noise? I don't know, maybe it's the person behind the camera. But when I first saw this video, I was immediately skeptical uh, skeptical about it just because of the way it looks it's I don't know it's uh, I took it into some software <laughs> and I can see some drastic inconsistencies so the first one I noticed was 
there's a couple of movements she makes which are awkward, but then her hand goes b by t towards the left of her table, and all of a sudden, it's as if she's like a superhero. She can she can bend space and time and light with her hand. Now, unless she's got a black hole in her little finger, which, let's be honest, is doubtful, that there is a lensing effect, which you can use in um, Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, and it's a simple lensing effect. Basically, they're trying to mask out the, the piece of string, which is no doubt hanging on the left-hand side of that table, ready to pull the, the plates uh, further in the video. So that's one thing I noticed, and I've pointed it out. Like I said, you, that's little wobble of the reflection of the glass in the table. You don't get that. <laughs> That's, that just doesn't happen unless the footage has been manipulated and they've tried to mask out the string in that little area. That's what that is. That's a lens in effect. So we'll go further. Now concentrate on the handkerchief, or the cloth, I should say, which I've highlighted. And if you can see the string, <laughs> which they either forgot to put out or they just thought it's good enough, you can't see that. Where I've zoomed in enhanced and you can clearly see the string before the cloth gets pulled and then the string is gone <laughs> and obviously what you can even see as well when the um, I'll demonstrate with this when this when the cloth gets pulled it sort of goes down like that and you can you can clearly see the point right there where it gets pulled it's on a string business I can't remember where he was now but it's a PPI claims business in Manchester again I saw this a couple of years ago and to be honest I when I initially saw I didn't look too much into it I thought it's pretty good but I didn't think it was real at all but I don't think I've seen anyone try to really look deep into it so I did and I noticed a few things I'm not going to show the entire video of this because it's five minutes long but the first discrepancy I noticed I'm sure there are more than I pointed out, but it was, you know, I was just I saw, I saw enough. <laughs> I've highlighted to keep an eye on that area where the chair gets pulled away from in the first part. Okay, keep an eye on that, and we'll look at that in the in the further in the video. And there I've highlighted again where basically when you see something like this in a video, it means they've masked something out. You, uh, either using a garbage mat or a lensing effect, they've masked something out. I'm saying this, they've masked a string out, which they're pulling the chair with. But when you see an artifact in, in a video, which does, if, if there's a wobble in the video or something, it means something's been played with and something's been masked out. That's that's the only way these things happen in these videos. All right, this next part, like I said, keep, keep an eye. If you notice, the chair, which was originally there now, which is still up there there's a ghost chair there which goes away on the next frame when the chair above gets pulled away that goes away <laughs> I'll go back and you can see it flick out of existence so don't forget now that people when they put time codes in these videos they're insinuating that it is real time you can see the timer it doesn't flick from one minute to the next 10 minutes, it co it counts down second by second. So this is supposedly in real time. But as you can see, there's clearly a cut there. Because <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, they, they they masked the chair out originally and then forgot to do it on the next part and they probably thought, it'll do, that'll do. Nobody will notice. <laughs> on the next part, which is the movie jump scare part of the video. Brace yourself. It's the monitors coming on, but off and on. Now, first of all, you can see if you, if you, I'm not going to zoom in because I can't be bothered. But if you look close, a lot of they're not really turning on. The, the the static has been added in post, and you can see in some of the background monitors, they the stat when they just basically placed it, overlaid it on top of the monitors in this because it's a locked off camera, and some of them are a bit off. And also, don't forget, you get sound in this. I think you can hear it, but there's like massive amount of static sound, which, you know, a monitor like that doesn't give off, the PC monitors. <laughs> but that was added in post, right? So there's that as well. And uh, this part again, uh, door slams and it shakes the CCTV. I don't know if there is the CCTV. I don't think they've just placed a camera on a shelf, you know, 
but it's when the door slams, it shakes the CCTV. And in doing so, they realized they, <laughs> they because it sh shook, they tried to mask out the string, which is probably pulling that door. And in doing so, they didn't match it up correctly to the, the filing cabinets. So that's why, if you look at it, where the, where the shake is, they didn't match it to the camera shake correctly. And once again, it's probably, that'll do. Nobody will notice. But that's what that is. They've masked the string out and they haven't matched the movement to the camera shake. Right, this next one, this is going to be a controversial one because when I started looking into this, someone suggested, have you ever seen Michael, Michael D. McGee? And when I looked him up, I thought, oh yeah, I have seen one of his videos a couple of years back. I can't remember which one it was. I think it was one of his Connect ones. So I thought, I'll, I'll give it a look. And immediately I started spotting stuff. But then, as I was editing this part, to point out the stuff I point, uh, stuff I can see, I started looking up other people who sort of not gone up against him or something, but like who sort of pointed things out, like the shoestring th uh, video. I'm not going to go into that, but if you want to look it up, Michael D. McGee, shoestring disappears. You know, the people who've done those videos got a lot of shit off his fans. So I was hesitant to put this one out first. But bugger it. I'm going to point him out. I'm going to point him out. I'm just pointing him out. But anyway, I've I've picked two videos off his channel so far. There's more. There's definitely more. But um, one of them, he... Um, he lays uh, a basket of apples on the floor and then it, it immediately moves. So I took it into ed some editing software, looked about, went frame by frame, like I always do with these videos. With, with the ones where I think is a bit of trickery anyway, not the ones which are just acted out. But there's two things I can see in this one. One is there's artifacting on one of the boards when the apples get closer. And you can see it, and I've put in a, I've put in a negative filter as well, so you can see it better and on the side. But you can see a wobble. Now that to me, it says it's masking something else. I don't piece of string maybe. I don't know, but it's definitely masking something out. <coughs> There's also, and I can't, I can't quite point it out as I've tried pointing it out, but just before, just before the apples move, a shadow slowly appears um, close to the door, to the front door, where I've tried to track it and I've exaggerated the shadow, but it definitely appears and it's almost, the shadow almost like, it's like, it's like somebody was there and they got masked out. That's what I can see anyway. And that's, you know, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But that's my alternative opinion to what happened in that clip. All right, this next clip is from a Portuguese YouTube channel. I did, I can't remember his name, David, David Robajo. I do apologize, I'm going off memory. I will link his channel. I'll link all videos. I'll link all the channels in the, in the description. But I remember seeing this a while ago. And I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was well acted. And, you know, I keep seeing this crop up as a real ghost in attic. Don't get me wrong. It's a bloody creepy video. Um, <laughs> this, this, this guy, when he's pulling down the ladder, cracks me up his exp facial expressions. He's trying to get his, his hysteric wife to calm down. <laughs> but when I first seen it, I thought it was pretty good. I didn't think it was real one bit. And like I said, you keep seeing these crop up on every single top 10 list. Like all these videos I keep showing, they, they crop up time and time again. You could say it, anyone with a bit of sense can see that thing in the attic is not real. It's creepy, but it's not real. But like I said, people keep perpetuating it as real. But thankfully, Callan from Slap Time, he does, like, unlike other channels, 
he does link all these videos in the description below his videos so that you can always do your own research which is vital I, I cannot stress enough how much you should do your own research on stuff you click on the link and you go to this guy's channel it takes you 30 seconds to realize he's a Portuguese filmmaker and he even says in his about um, description that he this is where he promotes his work his clear movie making work I'm not gonna go at him I think he's a pretty good movie maker myself off you know filmmaker he clearly states that it's not real it's just, it's his own filmmaking and he, he's he got this child to promote his own work next one is from an Australian dude <laughs> was apparently filmed in 1980 or oh, you haven't done his time code but I don't think he's fake he's not faking anything for a start but in nukes top five uh, list nuke goes on to say that and you do see it there's a black mass comes up just by his washing uh, tumble dryer in, by the kitchen door just as he pans he doesn't notice at the time I pointed it out but you know nuke himself I wish he'd say his bloody name but nuke himself actually says now first of all I thought it was a dog or a cat it's a dog <laughs> It's a dog because further on in the video you actually see the dog <laughs> The same black colored dog just walking across the room. It's a bit blurry You can tell it's a dog as you can see his legs his tail. It's just walking across the room and further on in the footage So it's definitely a dog going up to sniff the kitchen door You know easy um, And then further on in the video they say and he there was a <laughs> It was a quick there's a quick moving shadow going past the front door. It's like, choom, 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 like that. But even faster, it's like, and they, they're saying there's a, sh you know, the shadow person moves so quickly that you can barely see him. It's just, <laughs> just glimpses of him going past the window, the window of the door. It's just a rolling shutter effect. <laughs> That's what it is. You can look up a rolling shutter effect and you get them on like, say, for example, fast moving, um, videos of, or you see it in the, when the, the car wheels, the propeller blades of a plane. It, you know, you, you see a lot of rolling shutter effect when something moves so quickly, but the image stabilization can't quite keep up with it. That's sort of like, that's pretty much what a rolling shutter effect is, and that's what that door is doing. <laughs> the, the window. It's not a shadow person. <laughs> it's just a misunderstanding of how cameras work. That's all it is. The first clip, this was actually, hang on, I just remembered, this first clip was actually suggested by a viewer, when I find his name, if my voice is going a bit as well, my country played rugby last night, we lost, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but there was a lot of shouting. This first clip was suggested by a viewer, it's not a TikTok clip, but... I put it in at the beginning, so, you know, because I want to talk about it. But this was suggested by Craig Johnson. And he says, I came across this the other day. It's a classic British pub ghost thing where the CCTV is supposedly catching stools, doors, etc. Moving by themselves. I wondered if you would do a video including it. I'm going to do it right now. <laughs> so the first uh, video is from, what the hell is it called now? I died to oh, my memory's terrible with names. It's called, it's from a pub called the Tyler's Inn. I think it's in Kent in England, I think they said. Now bear in mind, this video posted on their website, or YouTube, I can't remember, I'll link it in the description, was posted just over a week before Halloween. Bear that in mind, okay? <laughs> so you got a lot of uh, spooky goings on in the CCTV footage. You see a door move, you see a chair move. Uh, the, what they call, not the umbrella, what they call the outdoor, Things, umbrellas, <laughs> that's what they're called. Goes up, the um, a pillow jumps off the settee. Full of bullshit, but I've spotted a few things. Now, first of all, I can't see any strings on the chairs. I know they're there, I just can't see them. It's quite grainy when you zoom in on the thing shaking as well. But there's two things in this video which lead me to think it's a load of bollocks. And the first one is the umbrella. Now I'm going to play the umbrella going up a few times here and see if you can spot what's weird about it. Because as soon as you see it, it's something weird about the way that umbrella moves. And it's not because it's going up on its own. 
It's the motion. So if you play that footage in reverse, you'll see that it's, it's just being dropped down normally. So I don't think I got like a piece because those outdoor umbrellas usually got a hook like on the pole and then you pull it and then it pops down. And they probably got like a piece of string on the on the pulley. They pull the string, as you can see it's shaking. They're probably trying to get it to get clip and then it falls down. But then obviously reverse that footage and posted it as this, there's a ghost opening the umbrella. <laughs> so that's one thing. And the second uh, one which is clearly manipulated is the pillow jumping off the settee. Once again, if you reverse that footage, it just looks like a pillow being thrown at the settee and, and falling naturally. You see? <laughs> so we can pretty much safely say that because of those two moments in that CCTV, that the rest of the footage is bollocks. Quite happily say it's a load of bullshit, if you ask me. Like I said, this was this video was posted just over a week before Halloween, and I linked their I did have their Facebook, I'm gonna have to try and bring it up again. But in their Facebook, they brought statements. After the, about, I think it was about a week after this was posted, uh, they, they, they saw it that it got a lot of views, a lot of, generated a lot of views and a lot of interest. And they posted on their Facebook, we have a lot more footage, unseen footage, which we didn't post here. Come to our Halloween party on Halloween night to see the rest. <laughs> hey, no, I can't fault them for the for their um, promotional uh, prowess. Is that the word? Prowess? Because, fair play, they did their job. <laughs> I'm probably going to get, if any of his fans ever see this video, I'm probably going to get some shit for it. But, you know, as always, this is my opinion. You're allowed your opinion. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. You know, so <laughs> this is my opinion. I'm just going to point out some of the stuff I see in these videos. So the first one is the one, the, this this video, when I first saw it, it did freak me out. I, th I thought it was pretty freaky. I thought it was a bit of bullshit. You know my stance on um, shadow people. I've said this in previous videos. I think the peekaboo shadows, which you see in a lot of these um Paranormal videos, ghost videos. I think they're 100% bollocks, if you ask me. I think they're either someone who they don't know is there, is peeking out. In this case, I think they know he's, he's there. <laughs> or there's someone who's gone along with the person or the group, and they're just going ahead, you know, with a hoodie up or a black cloak or whatever, and they're peeking out looking creepy. You know, that's... I, I don't believe any shadow person video at all. And I even had a comment on my the one I did, the Ghost of Carmel, Maine. Um, I can't remember what, exactly what they said, but it was along the lines of, I don't know, I got on my phone. Because it was like, it was quite funny, and it was quite ironic. <laughs> I'm not going to read out the name, but if you want to look it up. And uh, they say, How can you debunk a paranormal incident without ever setting foot inside the home? You just sit there in your armchair. It's not an armchair. And call other people liars. You know nothing about what's going on in Maine. He's talk he or she is talking about the ghost of Carmel Maine. And you're wrong. You're flat out wrong. So I replied. I mean, you're right. I'm not there. It could be 100 percent true. But you are not there either. How do you know it's true? <laughs> well, that was my reply. You know, you could you could say I'm wrong all you want. It's an opinion. But to tell me that it's 100% true when you are not even there, how do you know? You just don't. Anyway, I went off on a tangent there. <laughs> but, right, well, where was I? Franco TV. Right, Franco, I like you, but come on now. But anyway, <laughs> the first video is of the one in the mausoleum. He's in the mausoleum and he's walking towards... He's, this is like about half hour into the video. I'll link, obviously, as always, I'll link all the channels here. And the videos, if I can find them. But he's walking around a ma mausoleum. <clears throat> and he points at one, he, which he went to in the beginning of the video. But he points at one of the... Uh, is there a mausoleum or a crypt? I'm not, I'm not sure. And he sees a figure. Or a head poking out. Now, his light keep go keeps going on and off. And, he's, and he says in one of his other videos, the reason he does that is because he flicks from like low strength, high beam, low beam. And he's right about that. I got pretty much the same one. 
you know, so they do flick from low beam to high beam. So that's when you see him flicking back down and the light going off, dimming. That's what he's doing. But then as he gets closer, you know, the f further in the video, it goes closer and closer and he, he, the light keeps dimming. Bear in mind. And he looks in the moz or the crypt and there's no shadow figure. There's no shadow figure. How did that happen? In this first clip from Franco TV, I've added the text where I can see a cut. Now, you, you could, you, you, there's a cut disguised as a light dim, right? His torch going dim. It's disguised as one of those cuts. And the reason why I think that's a cut is because the plant, which is by that crypt, it keeps, you know, his, the light keeps dimming, you know, because he's, oh, he's changing beams. His light keeps dimming. But there's one dim where his torch is on the crypt. The plant is a certain distance from him. He's walking same speed the entire time. And his light goes off. And when the light comes back on, right there, which I hope I've synced this up correctly. It is, there is, it's very subtle, but there is a difference in the time it would have taken him today and the torch, where the torch is pointing when the light comes back on. <clears throat> and that's a cut. That's an edit. And I've pointed these out. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, if you watch, you watch it over and over on repeat and you'll see the edit more and more the more you see it. It's very subtle and like I said, it's disguised within a, a, a light, is torch going dim. So that's one. All right, this next one, I've been asked to look at this guy for a few times. Donnie Drunkard, brilliant name by the way. And I love his dog, Terry. <laughs> I think his dog is awesome. And his house is amazing. I don't know what he does for a living, but fair play, he's, he's, got, it, he's got it made. Um, but yeah, he's been posting a few videos lately of things going on in his house. He's, he's a paranormal investigator, an EVP specialist can you get them i don't know but apparently a ghost came home with him one day after an investigation and now he sees shadow things around his house and things you know his his lights move lights fixtures move here's things little bangs here and there cupboard doors open all things you can do on your own if you could if you wanted to just by running and moving them running back and then start filming i just i just heard something you know it's it's very simple to do but one of them on this one little clip I'm going to call the rest of that stuff in his channel bullshit. <laughs> and this is what I saw on Nuke's top five. I, I forgot to say I'm doing this on Nuke's top, Nuke's top five list, by the way. I forgot to say. But one of the clips, a black mass in the basement shoots from out of the darkness of his hallway. Now, I've t I took it. <laughs> I took it into some editing. If you reverse, like I, I've done this, I've done this in previous ones. If you reverse that footage of the black mass coming out of the hallway, it just looks like something's thrown from behind the camera into the the into the hall into the dark hallway, and then the footage is reversed to show it coming out of the hallway. It's as simple as that. And you can even see, which I'll try and highlight if I remember, you can even see when the in the reversed footage, when it's thrown from behind the camera, the shadow sort of goes it, it doesn't go straight across like with force it's just falling with gravity and just as it gets into the hallway it hits the floor you can't see it hit the floor but that's you know that's what physics implies that that does <laughs> so, you know but yeah that's that's on that one clip you know you see in another one he's got it fixed on his living room and a little shadow thing goes goes at the corner of the um, screen Again, he could be just putting his hand across or th like a piece of clothing just over the camera. You can't tell that because it's so quick, it's so fleeting. But that's what I think that is. Now in this one, he's playing the guitar. And the stool in the background s swivels. Now the c I can't see it, but that could be done any number of ways. Like it could be someone there hiding behind the set. He ducking down anywhere in that room, pulling the string. Or he could just be masking something out and he's doing it in later footage. You know, with, when, it, when, you, when you get a locked off screen, there's a lot you can do with masking out stuff, garbage mats, 
Um, like for example, keep an eye on our alien. Ready? See what I mean? <laughs> Let's see if we can spot <laughs> the bullshit. Honestly, if we can't spot, there's something wrong. But before we get into the first clip, I just want to read this one comment. And this comment was from Blue Moon. And he asked, check this one out. Alien or a kid in flip-flops with shorts on his head? Has the Dobby mystery been solved? <laughs> now this particular video, I have seen many times. I think we must have all seen it, I don't know. But it's basically what they call cryptid. I looked up the word cryptid, cryptid as well, and there's so much bullshit involved in that word. But anyway, yeah, so basically, I think this came out a few months ago about CCTV in somewhere in America, and uh, they they saw something uh, walk across their drive. The motion sensor activated their CCTV. And a dobby like creature walked across their drive. <laughs> now, they went to interview the family. And the mother's there along with the kid. And they're trying to say, you know, the kid, kid is probably the e uh, the alien. There's no way that kid is that alien. I don't believe it. I will not believe that kid is, that kid is absolutely that, that alien. The kid is absolutely that alien. <laughs> it's the same height. It's the same build. He's just walking, he's just, you know, you can even see at the beginning of the CCTV, the screen door of their front porch open, and he comes out of the house <laughs> in nothing but his boxer shorts with a pair of boxer shorts on his head doing a chicken dance. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the funniest videos I've seen. And I remember when this first came out, it was like a, there was so much bloody um, media, media coverage of that one video. Which, funnily enough, cuts out before you get to see the rest of the footage. I don't know why, but I've looked. You can't find any more footage, but not once did I think that was... <laughs> that was some alien cryptid creature, whatever. It's clearly the kid. <laughs> it's the kid with his boxes on his head. He's nine years old, ki nine year old kid. Hands up who did stupid shit as a nine year old. Hands up who lied to their parents about all the stupid shit they did as a nine year old. <laughs> I mean, come on. All right, my next clip. Uh, this one was, well, like, this isn't from any particular, well, saying that, it's not from any particular list because it's might been on every single list since the beginning. <laughs> uh, Craig Johnson <clears throat> asks, Hi, I was wondering if you could include this one in your upcoming video as it's an old one that's been on YouTube for over 15 years at least. 20 years I think it's been on YouTube for, not YouTube, but in existence, but anyway. I keep seeing on videos and debunking videos as one that has stood the test of time under scrutiny. The people who analyzed it apparently said the technology for amateurs to create it create it the way we would the create it the way we would know with computers could have been expensive and required a machine dedicated to it. I have no idea if that's true and don't even believe in ghosts, but I would still love to hear your take on it. The believers say it's like one of those stone tape theories. I've heard of the stone tape theories quite often, a lot, which I'll get into in a different video. Uh, that replay itself somehow and I've seen it repeat itself over and over on a loop imprinting the surroundings where it happened. It's a Gettib Gettysburg and is it's at Gettysburg and it's supposedly a ghost of soldiers of the day there during the Battle of Gettysburg. Now this vid this footage, particular footage, I've seen for years. Everyone has probably seen this. And it's basically probably the most famous Gettysburg um, ghost footage to date because I think it was filmed in 2001. But I, the earliest I've searched, the earliest footage I can see on YouTube is like 2006. 2006 or 2005, I can't remember. But the original footage is from 2001, which you can't find. I'm assuming it was on VHS. Possibly VHS or possibly one of the early digital recorders in 2001. Because you had them in 2001. But anyway, I'm going on. But a couple of things about this video. One, you don't know what part of the fields. Because Gettysburg is a big place. If you don't know what Gettysburg is, most Ameri well, the majority of Americans will know what Gettysburg. But if you don't know in other countries, look it up. It was a big battle of the, I think it was the American Civil War. Was it the Civil War? I'm sure there's a Civil War. And um, 
it was a big bloody battle. A lot of people died. Right, so so people go to Gettysburg, you know, on like sort of ghost tours or just military tours, historic tours. You know, they've been going there for years. But this one, um, this was. Like I said, this has been going around in F for years. Uh, basically, it's it's a family who have their camera fixed on a certain area of one of the fields. We don't know what part of the field they're on. Fields they're on. Sorry, or area they're in. Um, I got a feeling this is being pointed downhill towards like an overgrowth of trees because one of the um, I think it's one of the kids say, look, it's down there, down, you know, being down the hill. Could be. And basically, it's footage of ghost-like figures. Sort of, they're going at an angle. Okay, they're going sort of... I'm trying to, I'm trying to replicate the angle. So they're going that angle, like that. Is it that? Or that, more like. Yeah, so they're going that angle. And... You know, they're going that way, they're going that way, they're going that way. But it looks like to me, it looks like to me the camera's slightly downhill, so they're seeing an overgrowth of trees. I think it's slightly zoomed in. I don't think it's fake. Put, for, that's the first thing I should say. I don't think this footage is fake. Um, the people filming it, if you listen to them, they, this is the most genuine response you, you'll get. There's no acting, there's no digital trickery bullshittery there's none of that i think it's just a misunderstanding that's my this is my opinion this is just my opinion don't shoot me but i just think i just think it's a misinterpretation i should say of what is happening down there i don't think they're floating in the tops of the trees i think like i said because they're looking down they're just seeing people walking past like on a path or something now, some people have said it's uh, the ghostly figures of the Gettysburg soldiers with packs on. Who knows? Who knows, right? But I think it was just... A, I, and again, you don't know what time of day this is. Because of the, because of the quality of the video, you know, the technology was filmed on it at the time, like I said, that was 2001, almost 20 years ago now. I don't know if this is dusk, dawn. I don't think it's height of daylight. I don't think it's nighttime either. I think it's sort of like in between you know, the dusk and dawn period of the day. And like I said, I think it's looking slightly down the banking towards the growth of trees. And I think, my opinion, I think they're just seeing people walking through a pathway because I've seen some stinkers, let me tell you. So the first one I'm going to go to is not actually a video. It's actually a photograph. I've been, I've been asked to do photographs. I've wanted to do photographs for a while. And this is going to be the first one. It's, the rest are going to be videos. This one's going to be a photograph. But this comes from um, Samuel Rothenberg, who is now my biggest fan from what I can tell from the comments. Um, he commented on my Nukes Top 5, Number 10, Paranormal Debunking, uh, Ghost of Carmel main video. He's clearly a fan because <laughs> he says, Dude, sorry dude, you're an idiot and a fool. You can't just make a claim that someone is faking something without evidence. You need to provide that for it to be valid. Prove that he is faking or shut the fuck up. <laughs> now, first of all, I commented back, but you will gladly believe it's real going on his video evidence and his word. Interesting take. Uh, he responded, he provides his evidence. It's your job to debunk it. Like those strings attached to the guy jumping out the window. Do more of that, less of, oh, it's fake. I can't remember it. I can't remember if I did say, oh, it's just fake. I'm sure I pointed out cuts in the video, but it doesn't matter. And he goes on to say, how do you explain the spirit box recording? So I'm sure I did. <laughs> That's proof enough for me. But I know ghosts are real. If you do not, try Googling the ghost that screamed. Debunk that. Now, first of all, to, to the haters who tell me I'm an idiot and, you know, tell me to shut the fuck up. Do you know what I say to people like that? You're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> but I looked up this Ghost of Screamed. And the first, well, there's a couple of websites I come across. But it was about a car crash which tragically happened in 1984 in Hyde Park. I think it's Vermont or Virginia. I can't remember. Vermont. I I don't know American states, so shoot me. 
Um, and it's basically in 1984, a group of teenagers were riding along and they four by four going to a concert and they tragically crashed and one of them unfortunately died. I'm not gonna go into the details. If you wanna look it up, it's tragic, tragic, tragic circumstances. But the police officer who turned up to the crime scene, not an accident scene, I should say, took, started taking photos. Now there's only one photo in, the, in this entire case, one photo. No other photos exist. No photos of the teenagers or people involved exist, have looked. So you can't compare notes. But in the one photo is of the, like I said, the crash or the accident is you can see the car. And there's various things going on in this photo, but one of them apparently is the ghost that screened us. This, by the way, this supposedly the picture or the ghost of the, the boy who unfortunately died in the accident. And you can see it above the car and you know, it's weird. But th the, the, the main thing which from reading the case notes is like I said, the, the police officer had it developed and the, the, the guy who had them developed said, you should see this. And then they put the photo out and then a, a psychic phoned in. Now, <laughs> I have big problems with psychics. I'll go into them in another, another video, but she claims that that's, you know, she feels, she said this, she feels that's the spirit of the, the, the boy who died because he didn't want to die, clearly he didn't want to die. And he's leaving his body and he's screaming because he don't want to, don't want to go to heaven or something, I don't know. And apparently there's also a ghost dog. I can't see the goat dog anywhere in this bloody, I've looked everywhere, I can't see any dog. <laughs> like the, the nearest thing I can see to a dog is in the doorway on the back seat. I don't know. Or it might be that thing up to the left. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff going on in this photo which isn't paranormal. And I'll go into some detail with that if I can. Now I'm going to try and break this uh, photo down bit by bit and try and highlight some areas which are of interest to me. Now the first thing that we can see, this is supposed to be the ghost that screamed. Looking around all this photo, you can see various light streaks there, all over the place, there, there. The car door frame is duplicated there, 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 and there and there. We know that this camera was moving when he took the photo, okay? Now the first thing that strikes me is this is supposed to be the face of the ghost. Now the proportion of this face is car very cartoonish. That's the hairline. That I think is supposed to be the nose. That's the mouth, I think. And then the humongous chin. Now if you point out any human which looks like that, let me know. I haven't seen one myself. And I, and I, I also as well, like, apparently there's supposed to be a dog in this picture. I can't see any dog. The only thing which looks remotely like the dog is that thing there. Which, I don't know. I don't know, that, that, I think that is supposed to be the dog. I'm not 100%, but that's the only thing I can see which even closely resembles a dog. Now, we know we know that this was in 1984. The camera he was using was probably a 35mm camera. It was no digital cameras back then. There's no photo edit, well, there was photo editing techniques, but you know, there's nothing like you get today with Photoshop, nothing. But none of this picture is doctored, I can tell her that much. But what, like I said, with the streaks, which are going, the light streaks, uh, they're, they're all fading off into that direction. So he was more than likely walking to his left whilst he was taking the photo. This photo wasn't taken on a tripod, it was taken freehand. And you know you can tell that by the way the light streaks. So the light streaks you see in this photo is because of a slow shutter speed. Basically, with the old 35mm cameras, you had to get the light to get a good picture with them, especially if you were moving, you had to have a steady hand. You had to sync the uh, the flash up with the exposure time frame, time rate, I should say, of the camera. Now you can look up any 35mm cameras and they all you all you had to do that back then with the 35mm cameras. You had to sync the flash with the exposure rate in order to get a good lit photograph. Otherwise, you would have streaks like you see in, in this photo. You know, it's, that's, that's what happens when you have a long exposure 
with an out of sync flash. Now we know when the police officer got there, reading from the reports, I've looked her up, that you know after everything was done and dusted, they were immediately started taking photos. Now we can already tell it wasn't on a tripod. I'm gonna use this as an example. This is a digital camera, but I'm gonna use an example. So he was probably taking photos, you know, just taking all angles, just um, taking down evidential photos, basically. Evidential, is that, is that a term? I don't know. Ever, evidence of the crime, not crime scene, but the accident scene. And just dotting down a, any photo you could take, you know, which might be evidence in court or insurance claims, whatever. You know, of, of trying to make a picture of what happened. You know, the, the, ch the chances of this number of things, a uh, few things, which for me, this is my opinion what I can see in this photo and uh, like I said the the photograph of the face the, the whole face looks way out of proportion apparently you know it's I think it's supposed to be showing half the face that way <laughs> I suppose that's supposed to be the angle it's at now look up now I've got a weird head anyway but look at the you know my eyes to my ears my jawline to my ears you know, that that jawline there looks like something from the Despot Dan comics. <laughs> you know, so I think it's just and I've I've the one of the websites I went to when I looking up this photo, the ghost that screamed, one of the comments said, people will probably put this down as Matrix in and Paradolia, but they're wrong. Well, Paradolia is a real thing. <laughs> you know, matrixing is a real thing. And it's basically where your brain tries to find anything a brain, a brain has been through thousands, you know, th years and years of evolution. Our brain is accustomed to finding eyes, nose, mouth in anything we look at. It's just the way our brain works. We know that much. So I think it's down to a number of things. It's definitely down to pareidolia because that dog, well, I think I think that's supposed to be the dog. I can't tell myself, to be honest. With that's, that's the only place in this photograph which even looks remotely like a dog. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I can't see anything else. But, um, and the face is down to pareidolia matrixing. And the streaks you see is we know that he's moving the camera as, as he's taking the photo. You know, I'm not saying he's clicking like that. But he's probably clicking, clicking, clicking and as he goes you know moves which he's moving to the left we know that much because of the way the light streaks the fades out to the right you know he's taking photos taking photos taking photos and that's that ah that oh, there she is right miss doolittle has asked there's a clip being portrayed as real since 2016 i haven't found anything debunking it your turn now I'm not one to turn down the challenge, so I answered. I will add it to the next video if I can. So I went to the clip, and it's one I have seen before. And I've only briefly seen it about, I think, once or twice, uh, like Nuke's videos, I think, Slap Tam's covered I think every top 10 list has covered it, actually. And it's of a woman sitting on what, what looks like a sort of a canteen or waiting area. She's on her phone, and then she shoot, the chair behind her moves. She gets up and then, like, tables crash into the chair and she she runs at the door all the tables go to block the door and then she faints <laughs> like i said i've seen this a couple of times in the past i've never really looked deep into it i thought it was an interesting one and the link I was sent was sent to one which was, it's quite blurry. You know, there's like, it's, it's, I think it's of a person filming the footage. It's apparently CCTV, I should have added that. Or what I thought was CCTV of an Indonesian hotel. Now that was the first thing. So I, I did some more digging. Then I found out it's not Indonesian, it's Malaysian. So I got it a little bit closer, then I did more digging. Then I found out it wasn't the hotel, it's a drive-in. I think it's like a drive-in, what's it called? Drive-in instructor's building or something? Drive-in center, I should, I should say. <laughs> so I did more more digging. I kept on, every time I found a bit of footage or a bit of information, I kept on digging and digging and digging. And then I found another video of the same footage, but this time with added on stuff in the beginning, which you never see in these top tens. They, all, they only ever show that one room with that woman, um, fainting after being chased by chairs. <laughs> you, know, you only ever see that. You never see these 
earlier parts. You rarely ever see them. There's only about two videos which had these earlier parts. So once I found out that, I kept digging again. I came to something called Bangunan. <laughs> I'm so happy I found this because like I, I like when Mr. Little said nobody um I haven't been able to debunk this, can't find anyone debunking this, and I looked. And if there is anyone debunking it, I couldn't find it. But I've looked everywhere and I couldn't find anyone debunking this. So when I finally got to the bottom of this, to say the least, I was happy is an understatement. <laughs> the footage is from a, f a Malaysian film called Bangunan. It's a film which came out in 2015. Uh, sorry, either 2015 or 2016. I can't remember. 2015, I think it was. The trailer came out late 2014. I'll show you a bit of the film in the trailer, but I don't want to get copyrighted by them, so I won't show you too much, but I will link them down below. The film is just under two hours long. It has subtitles. I've watched it all. It's quite a cool film, but it's one of those um, documentary-style, sort of like Blair Witch found footage t uh, horror films. Basically, the crew of the film was sent in this footage by this company <laughs> to investigate the disappearance of the this woman in the CCTV but you found you find out that there's two people missing and the whole building not just that area but the whole building is haunted they do it quite well they make it out as they, they're making a documentary on this CCTV footage no no t no CCTV footage exists before this film was made or before it was being made like I think it was being made in early 2014 I think so no footage exists of that but obviously the time code is 2010 at first I thought oh, maybe Maybe they are genuinely making a documentary about this, um, about the CCTV footage. But when you dig in deeper, you go to IMDb, you go to the, all the people in the uh, film. They're all actors, producers, musicians. You know, they're all, they're, they're all, um, how can I say, they're all in the industry. The, uh, one of the, I think it's the director of the film, when you look at his bio on IMDb, again, I'll, I'll try and link them if I remember, but he, the, he lists various films and Bangunan is one of them and it's, it comes under, under experimental horror film. You know, it's so, we know the footage is from that film. I mean, that part is, the CCTV area part is pretty good, but when you get on further in the film, there's, there's parts of the foot, uh, film which is clearly staged. Clearly staged. <laughs> You know, but it, they do a good job. I'm not knocking the filmmakers. They do a, an excellent job, you know, in um, sort of like making a documentary style f horror film. Right, the next one is from, this was another suggestion, but again, I've seen this in Nukes. I've seen it in Slatam. It's from a channel called Really Haunted. And it's a British uh, YouTuber who apparently is getting haunted in his home. I've seen a couple of their videos and... Things are thrown while they're sleeping. The kit, the kit, the kitchen gets messed up. It's not quite mellow bird proportions of messed up, but you know the things are happening. <clears throat> so I saw a couple of things in the videos, which I'll go, I'll go into in a future video because too much. But one video, in fact, I think it's his most recent video, and he's sleeping in his living room, I think, by the looks of it, and there's a teddy bear up in the corner. Now, from looking at it, I, the, when the teddy bear gets pulled from the corner, I was looking and I couldn't see any strings. I know they're there because of the way the, the bear gets pulled. I know they're there. But the one thing I did notice of this footage was when the bear gets pulled, and I'll slow this down and I'll highlight the area where I can see it, the shadow of the bear completely disappears as it gets to a certain part of the, the wall, I should say. And this isn't the bear dipping, it's not the shadow dipping, it's not the bear dipping. It's instant. And I've highlighted it where I can see the clip. Basically, like I've said uh, in many videos now, where on locked off camera, how easy it is to uh, mask an area out, replace it with a different time of the footage, so you can have him sleeping and then someone or something pull the bear this this video here is from Ireland and this was in a very recent um, slap town video and, I, and I, I wasn't going to include this one but I thought I'm, I'm going to include this because like I said people are still saying this ghosts it's utter bullshit <laughs> but I, I debunked this 
other people have as well but i debunked this about three or four years ago i didn't make a video on it didn't upload it i didn't tell anyone about it i saw it on one of these top 10 channels i thought hang on there's a gap in the wall right there i can see the gap but obviously in these videos and in slap tam Callens as well he says it comes out of it walks across the road and it disappears into the wall so I went to Google Maps and I did this a couple of years back. I did the exact same thing. I went to Google Maps or Google Earth, sorry. And because they had the street and the place it was, you can Google Earth, street maps, street view, that area. And you can clearly see. <laughs> you can clearly see the gap in the fence where the guy walks through. And you can see the gap the opposite side as well, where he walks from. And once again, I've highlighted it. You can see the on the left, the red square was where you walk from. And on the square on the right is where the gap in the fence he walks through. But yet people are still saying uh, that's a ghost. And the most baffling, well, it's not baffling because I know how these top channel, channel, top 10 channel works. <laughs> and once again, this is going back to when he says scientists are baffled, experts are baffled. He says, locals are terrified by this ghost i looked i couldn't find anything about lo any locals saying they're terrified of this ghost and if there's any locals who saw this video they'd immediately know no he just walked through the bloody gap in the fence utter bollocks that's what it is <laughs> just total and utter bullshit first one i want to get out of the way and i saw this uh, a couple of weeks back and it's basically a video of the um the chancellor of the uk and he, d he did the budget. We have a we have a yearly budget in the UK where they announce what's, what prices are going up on here and what prices are going down. They come out, they show a nice red book. And, you know, they, they always do it. It's like for photo op. They always do it over here. But the most recent one, I think it was last month. Where are we in? I think, yeah, last month. And you got Rishi comes out. He shows the book. And this is on live on Sky... No, it wasn't live. <laughs> Sorry. This is on Sky News. And he walks behind the car and he comes back and it's green change and the government is committed to reaching net zero by 2050 but how much will coronavirus impact what many believe would be a green budget it's green and people were screaming simulation <laughs> we're living in a simulation now that is possible we can't we can't tell either way if we're not I'm not going against that theory i think it's quite a cool theory <laughs> Probably not, but who knows? Who knows? We don't know. People were screaming, the, um, people were screaming, simulation. So I had a look at it, and there's this context to that video, which you have to listen to, which I'm going to play you the video right now. But how much will coronavirus impact what many believed would be a green budget? So basically, the the reporter is, is talking about the budget, and they're talking about um, something, something, how it become a green budget. You know, the, the Green Party or Green Budget, I can't remember. And then the, the folder turns green just as she says it. You know, the thing with the UK um, tabloids or news over here, they like to mess around with metaphors visually. <laughs> they, always, they always do stuff like this. And, you know, something like that is quite easy. Here's something I prepared earlier. <laughs> Just coloring book. Uh, not, it's not a color, kids' coloring book. It's a drawing book. I like to draw. But anyway, this is it's something I prepared earlier. And with the power of my mind, <coughs> see, it's quite simple to do. <laughs> One of them is uh, a classic footage from 1988. Another one is a UFO. <laughs> oh yes. first clip which we're going to look at is quite a famous one and I remember seeing this years ago before the days of YouTube before Christ it might even be before the days of internet I can't remember no it wasn't um, but it was called the Park Haunting or Ghost and it's about um, a paranormal investigator he went to this house I think the house is called Park House or something and 
he's gone there to investigate like various things happening to the family and he sets up his camera and for so he says in the video that for some reason I was like I wanted to point my camera at this picture but he pointed at the picture and as he zoomed out which I'll go into that as he has he zoomed out has why am I saying has as he zoomed out <laughs> yeah as he zooms out a black mass appears in the center of his in the set in the corner of the room according to them they bring in experts uh, who say I can't I don't know what it is it looks like a black mass in the corner of the room and he pans to the right and you can see the reflection of the black mass reflection in the mirror first of all you can't find the full footage anywhere the only footage you will ever see anywhere on the internet is the one where it shows the corner of the room and the next is a cut to the the reflection in the mirror you never see the pan to the right now that's one thing to know the documentary which this was originally in was at least um 1996 he filmed this in 1988 he he filmed it himself in 1988 the footage of the black mass and then the first i think the first known documentary was in 1996 and the reason why you can find that out is because in the documentary the guy who took the footage he says he, he mentions the sixth sense the film with bruce willis so we know i'm fairly sure that's 96 i need to look that up <laughs> jesus it was 99 okay i was uh, a bit early so basically that, that we know that documentary at least was 2000 at the latest at the earliest sorry so you know it was a good couple of years since that 1988 footage so we don't know where that original footage is it's a vhs uh, video camera this is before digital remember somebody said they don't like elaborate explanations sometimes i do go into the elaborate explanations i can't help it but basically what i think is happening got like a spot on his lens either his lens i have filmed some footage of my lens i got a dslr which is obviously it wasn't a dslr back then it was a different kind of lens but the the actual lens itself works pretty much the same way and basically what i think is happening is like a speck of dirt or or something really microscopic on his on his one of his mirrors in his camera or one of the lens so when i I'm, when he zooms out the mass gets bigger and bigger the more he zooms out now what i think is happening is he didn't zoom out i think he zoomed in i think he zoomed in and that's you know he's the, the mass was there so i think he knew the mass was there in his lens and when he zoomed in it disappears because basically way, the way a lens works that you've got like mirrors like that and you've got the the lens there which when you zoom out or in the aperture opens wider and get it gets narrower whichever way you're going it is he's got something on his lens and when he zooms in I th i'm sure he's zooming in and they just reverse the footage for whatever reason and that's when the mass disappears <laughs> and then they the experts the experts they asked in the thing they in the documentary they said oh well when he panned to the right it was a reflection in a window but you never see the footage of him panning to the right that's the that's the problem right there when he does show the footage of the the mass in the reflection of the mirror the experts experts say this is definitive proof because the mass shows in the reflection in the mirror now if you look closely i've highlighted it <laughs> i have highlighted the area of the mirror and if you look at the frame of the mirror it's completely covered up by the black mass so if it was a reflection that frame wouldn't be covered up by the black mass it would be on the inside of the frame frame of the mirror i'm talking about so so we know that that black mass is at least on the outside of the mirror on the lens and when it moves when you watch the footage of the mo mass moving in the mirror the camera is not he's, he's not waiting for the f the mass to move then track the mass the mass moves exactly the same time as the camera so that just to me tells me that he's got something on his lens so when he that 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 mass he probably knew i'm gonna say he knew exactly about that mass <laughs> before he started recording whatever he maybe went into that room and he got dust on the lens or a hair or something when you get stuff like that on a lens i got a dslr when you get stuff something like that on the inside of a lens or one of the mirrors it shows 
you know, it might be a microscopic little tiny thing to the naked eye, but on the lens, when you're zooming in, it's, it gets blown up. So that's where I think it, uh, that all that footage is. Right, the final video, this is the one I can't debunk. I've been asked about this video many times. I've gone over and over and over in this video many times over the last couple of, well, couple of months. And today I, I must have looked at this video for about almost two hours, frame by frame, <laughs> looking for like string. I was looking for string behind the, the, the trolley, the bottom left. You can't rule that out because you can't see underneath the trolley, but I'm saying I can't debunk this one, but I am going to give an explanation for it and I've pointed a few things out. Now, this is a bit out there, I, I must admit. This might be grasping, I don't know. <laughs> but this is my explanation, what it could be. But, this, but the reason I'm saying I can't debunk this, because I know my explanation is probably grasping a bit, right? So I'm gonna say can't debunk, but. <clears throat> Here it goes. Shall I put my glasses on for this one? To look more professional? No, I won't, no, okay. Anyway, <laughs> throughout this video, you will see inter interpolating, I'm saying that wrong. You will see interpolating frames throughout the footage in this. Not in all of it, but in most of it, you'll see little where basically the software, this happens in a lot of software, where it will add the frame. Like your TVs do it for certain programs. Um, some editing software, you can do it manually adding frames, but I don't know why the CCTV does it, but maybe it does for whatever reason. But what I can see, I should say, you know, this is like, this was going around in January and I remember seeing this one and I thought, that's really good. That is really good. And basically she, uh, she puts her foot up and the stool moves just before. And it, if you look, if you look at it in motion, that stool 100% moves before her foot gets about that close to it. So the stool definitely moves, then her foot tries to grasp onto it. That's what it looks like, okay? But I, like I said, I went frame by frame by frame through this bloody footage and I almost gave up on it and I was just gonna add it and say in something I can't debunk, but like, this is my explanation. And it's a bit nuts. <laughs> like I said, throughout this footage, the software on their CCTV is interpolating frames, basically adding frames into it. And with, what happens with interpolating frames, they will add like a frame behind the, um, if there's like a low frame rate, I'm sorry, I should say, it will add a frame behind uh, the actual f current frame. <laughs> and it will also some for it add a frame in front of it. So it gives you a smoother motion when in motion, right? Sounds a bit weird, but trust me. But I've noticed in two two parts of this video, if you look, I've highlighted it, her foot, her foot right there now, you can see the current frame, which is obviously the solid white foot. And then the, you can see like a ghostly foot in front, which has already gone down. Cause that's the software has interpolated the frame. Going a bit more forward, when her left foot goes up towards the stool, Again, I've highlighted it. You can see a ghostly foot, which is already touching the stool. Once again, the footage is interpolating the frame forwards. It's not predicting the future by adding a ghostly foot there. Basically, the foot is already there, but it's interpolating between the two frames, right? So the reason you can't, you don't see that kind of thing on like the stool or anything else, because they're static objects. They will only show that in fast motion or whatever on certain softwares. So what I think is happening, and like I said, this is a bit nuts, I know, but what I think is happening, that her foot does touch the stool and knocks it forward and then she like, so without, obviously without looking, she knocks it forward, falls and takes a hell of a hit. Don't, I should say, you know, I should have said at the beginning, um, nothing is faked in this footage. I don't think anything is faked. You can see by the hit she takes, she didn't mean to do that at all, but, that's where I think it is, that her foot did, did touch the stool, but because of the way the software works with interpolating frames, it it looks like, in motion, that her foot is, that the stool moves before her foot gets to it. So we got one frame of the foot there, and that's the stool, but we got the interpolated frame of the foot, which is actually touching it. And you know, that's what, that's what kicks the frame, uh, the stool away. 